All right, in this video, we'll be start. We'll begin talking about this concept of macromolecules and what they are made out of and what they are in general. So, macromolecules are made up of pieces called monomers. Mono means one, and so monomers are these individual subunits of macromolecules, and they can combine together to create polymers. And so a polymer is just multiple pieces of a monomer. And a polymer is typically what we think of as a macro molecule. A polymer can just be a handful of pieces. A polymer could be thousands of pieces. It's just when you have more than one, all right? And when these two molecules interact, they form, when these monomers interact, they form what is called a covalent bond. This is the strongest type of chemical bond that we'll talk about. And in this, in this particular type of chemical bond, there is a sharing of electrons. All right. So when these two glucose molecules combine, they will share these electrons and they will form this covalent bond here, which again is a very strong bond. Glucose represents a monomer. It's a single piece. This glucose is a single piece. You combine them together and you have a polymer here. Very simple, small polymer, but still a polymer. Monomers have different chemical properties that allow them to react and combine in different ways. And so we're going to look at how glucose or how, you know, carbohydrate like a sugar reacts different than a protein and so forth. So again, these macromolecules are when you have multiples of these monomers. And so for each type of macromolecule, there are four carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. Each one of these has a corresponding monomer. And for carbohydrates, that monomer is called a monosaccharide. So sometimes you will see a carbohydrate called a polysaccharide, which makes sense. The monomers of lipids are called fatty acids. Lipids are a little bit different in that they don't fit the traditional concept of what we would think about as a polymer in that it's not a bunch of linked things are kind of combined on one on this one piece here, but we'll still consider it in the same uh, vein as the other things. So the monomer of a lipid is called a fatty acid. It's just this long chain of carbons and hydrogens. Uh, the monomer of a nucleic acid is called a nucleotide. We'll spend uh, some time talking about nucleotides and nucleic acids even. And then for proteins, a monomer for proteins is called an amino acid. And we'll spend some time talking about that as well. Sometimes you will see proteins referred to as polypeptides, which has to do with the bond, the name of the bond between amino acids. So there are two kinds of reactions that we're going to talk about that are involved in the formation of macromolecules. One of them is called a dehydration synthesis. And so if we use this word here, dehydration synthesis, we can break it down and to understand what it means. Dehydration means to remove water from something, right? To dehydrate means to make it dry. And so this is, has to do with uh, removing water. Anytime you see the word synthesis, it has to do with making something, combining things. And so this word, think about it, is removing water to combine two things. And that's exactly what is happening in a dehydration synthesis reaction. Here you have the combination of two uh, carbohydrate monomers. You have glucose here and you have fructose here. And you have the OH on this glucose taken off and the H of this fructose that are taken off. And those at OH and that H combine to make water which makes sense, right? And it's kind of like a byproduct of the reaction. You take those off and you have this bond between glucose and fructose. And this new molecule has its own properties separate from glucose and fructose. And it's called sucrose, which is what we call table sugar. And if you look closely at uh, glucose and fructose, they have the same chemical formula as well. They're just completely shaped different. Notice fructose is a five-sided ring. Glucose is a six-sided ring. And so this, you can see how you can come up with just 
infinite different combinations and therefore lots of different properties of different kinds of molecules can arise from those. Here's another example of a dehydration synthesis between two amino acids. Here you have an amino acid and here's another amino acid, the OH from the carboxyl end of this amino acid combines with this H from the amino end of this amino acid and you have water being taken out and they combine together to form a peptide bond between these two amino acids. So very strong bond. This is just two amino acids. A protein can be several hundred amino acids in length. And so um, this is just one example of that. The other reaction, the opposite of the dehydration synthesis, is called a hydrolysis reaction. And a hydrolysis reaction, if let's break it down again here, hydro, think of what hydro means. It means water or hydrogen. In this case, we're going to think water. And anytime you see this lysis or L-Y-S in particular, it means to break something in its original language. And so this is using water to break bonds. And so in this case, it's the opposite. Whereas in dehydration synthesis, we combined two things by pulling water out. In this instance, we're going to break this apart by adding water. And you see this here. Here's a triglyceride. The triglyceride is a polymer of a lipid. And so here you have what is known as a glycerol molecule. And then you have these fatty acid chains that are represented by R, A, B, and C. And you add water to those and you have your glycerol separated from these three individual fatty acids. And so this is an example of a hydrolysis reaction. Large amounts of energy can be released in hydrolysis reactions. We're going to talk about the hydrolysis of several different kinds of molecules over the course of this class. And here is an example of an amino acid, or excuse me, a nucleic acid that is being broken down. On this end, you have two nu nucleotides. Here's DNA. These two nucleotides are combined. And water, H2O, is combined into this. And those two molecules are separated. And you have the O going on one side and the OH going on the other. Now, this would be a less common type of hydrolysis. But it's still something that occurs often enough, and particularly when you think about breaking down, you know, this is sucrose, this is table sugar, our bodies do this all the time, right? And so you would add water to this to break these two things apart, just like when you put them together, you had to take water out. And so these two reactions are the opposite of one another.